So when I first came out and I thought, well, maybe I should learn something about this, I immediately realized there was no place I was going to learn anything about it. I was hardly going to go to the library and say, hey, are there any books on homosexuality? And I certainly was going to ask my parents. You know, my parents actually did know somebody who was gay, and they made fun of him. They liked him, but, you know, there was that undertone of he, he was weird and different, and I didn't want them to think I was weird and different, because maybe I already was a little weird and different already. I didn't want to push it anymore. So basically, there was no place to turn, certainly nobody to talk to. Uh, there was no internet. There was no way I could learn anything. So basically, I just had to, um, as I said, keep it in my head and not talk to anybody about it. It wasn't until I was in college and I was so depressed that I, I was pretty suicidal. I, I don't know if I tried to commit suicide, but I took a bunch of pills. Uh, they really weren't enough to really hurt me, but you know, it's a little drama. So um, my parents then said, well, maybe you should see a shrink. So I did go see my first shrink and that was a disaster because his attitude was, have you had sex yet with a man? And I said, no. He said, well, you're not gay. Gay men have sex with men all the time. That's what they do. Have you had sex with men all the time? I go, no. He said, you're not gay. You're a straight boy, and you're going to learn to love women. And that was that. And they would have me do some kind of strange things. Uh, the, when I was at um, Stanford, the, the <laughs> The psychiatrist there said, well, I'm going to give you a rubber band and you put the rubber band on your wrist and every time you have one of these thoughts that you think is negative, you snap it. So you just keep snapping that band and eventually you'll probably associate some of these thoughts with the pain you're going to feel. And of course, at the end of what, three days, I broke the band. It was almost as if um, they thought they could get me over to their team. You know, it was almost like, well, this guy is not having sex with guys and he seems pretty straight and he plays sports and because uh, by that time I'd like grown into my full self, and I didn't seem straight uh, gay to them. So um, I guess they felt they could like win me over. When he told me I needed to see a sex surrogate, I freaked out because I knew what that meant, that I was going to be having sex with women. And I'm thinking, Okay, I mean, maybe this is great, maybe he's right, maybe if I start having lots of sex with women, everything will, like, straighten out. Ooh. So, um, when the shrink first tells me uh, who I'm going to go see, he says, oh, by the way, her, her name's a little unusual, it's Tiger Lily. And I go, Tiger Lily is her name? And he goes, yeah, you can just call her Tiger, because that's what most people call her. Um, and if you go to her apartment, you'll see, mm, I don't know, 20, 30 tigers, stuffed tigers, china tigers, pictures of tigers. There are tigers everywhere. She's really into tigers. God, it was a rainy, cold New York City night, and I'm scared in this horrible little lobby, and I, I ring the bell, and I don't get an answer, and I'm ready to walk away, and I did, finally the buzzer goes off, and I go upstairs, and, and there's this uh, very, very, very attractive uh, Asian-American woman uh, who answers the door, and we sit down, and she offers me a drink, and I don't drink much, so I said no. She said, do you want to smoke some marijuana? I said no, because that seemed like that would be even more freaky. Um, and she just said, well, you know, why are you here? Uh, what do you want from me? We ended up taking off our clothes and simply lying in bed next to each other. And all she said was, I just want you to feel comfortable lying naked next to a woman all you have to do, just feel comfortable. Nothing's expected of you. You don't have to do anything. Just try to feel comfortable. Then we progressed to taking a shower together so that I could become very familiar with the female body. And that meant cleaning all of her, including her private parts and vice versa. Um, we're still only at a point now where we go to bed and she masturbates me so I can feel comfortable uh, reaching climax in front of a woman. Um, and I don't really think it, I think it may have been an entire year before we actually got to the point where I was able to start having sex with her. 
um, once that happened, it was, it was <laughs> like the dam burst. Then I could do it. Because um, it was, I had so much blocked in me. I had so much, I didn't want to do it. It wasn't who I am. But maybe I should do it. I don't know. Everybody says I should. This isn't good to be gay. I don't know what I want. But once I actually started to do it, yeah, then, then we started having sex every week. What was interesting, though, is because this tiger was no dope. In fact, she's a really smart woman. Um, at some point, she said, look, you can have sex with me. Um, now, and, and well, she'd also then started having me see other women so that I could start having sex with somebody besides her so I wouldn't just think of sex with her. But after we had six months of this, she goes, look, you know, you can have sex with women, you know, but you don't want to. You're gay. You can keep doing this, but you're gay. You can have sex with women, but you're gay. So what do you want to do? And I thought, oh, I guess it's time for me to admit that I'm gay. And that was pretty much it. Well, the idea that I, that I wasn't good enough, that society didn't feel that uh, I, I, I could be an upstanding member of it, uh, made me feel terrible because, um, you know, I was young. I, I, I believed they were probably right. There was something wrong with me. There would always be something wrong with me. I, I, I felt I was defective. And all of these male shrinks who kept trying to convince me that I could be straight, maybe believe even more so that I should be straight. So it just, it, it, it took a lot out of me. Um, I, I, you know, I, I really believe that, and, and I've written about this, that we, we all lose portions of ourselves through our life's journey. Uh, bad things happen, we lose a portion, we, something else happens. And I just felt like a lot of me was taken away. Um, I never had the chance to, uh, to have a, a, a teenage romance. I never had the chance to feel good about myself. I never had the chance to date. I never had the chance to do so many of the things that, that other people take for granted. A really good, thoughtful therapist is not going to try to convince you to be somebody completely different than who you are. One of the things that still bothers me is I, I didn't really start a retirement account until my mid-30s because all of my money went into therapy. So I paid for their vacations, but I never got to have a vacation. I never, I, I, my money went into therapy, and um, I really wish I could have gotten that back. You know, I, I, I've been through a lot, and, and I am comfortable now with who I am, although it took a really long time to get here. Um, I, I just really wish that somebody who's 20 could be where, closer to where I am, instead of having to go through all that I went through. Um, because eventually, all you eventually learn is you are who you are, and the more you know yourself, the better you are, and the way to know yourself is not to try to change yourself into somebody you're not. And so I just hope that conversion therapy is eventually outlawed and we can start trying to let people be who they really are.